Hi, I'm Tim. I am the Tinkering Turtle. Today, I am got a bike here that I was super excited to get. Normally, I won't accept bikes in the winter time because the Michigan or the Michigan weather here just doesn't accommodate it. Uh, when marketing for Hemiway reached out and offered up this bike, I was really excited. And fortunately, the weather had been really mild all winter it only had a couple of snowstorms the rest of the time was 30s and 40s so i thought man i can get this bike i can put it together go for a ride unfortunately as soon as the bike got here we got a snowstorm 10 inches of snow just what do you do but until we can get out and ride i'm going to go ahead and do the assembly video and show you how to set up the bike to get ready for the first ride go over all the steps that you need to get this thing ready to go. I personally don't ride in the snow. These bikes can be ridden in the snow. The reason I don't is I'm older and if I do go down, it takes a long time to heal. I typically only ride on asphalt bike paths and when it snows, that first layer is always ice and then you get snow on top and it's just treacherous. If I lived in an area that I could ride on dirt and the snow was on top of the dirt, it wouldn't bother me so much. I wouldn't be as concerned about it, but it's just one of those things. I don't do it. I'm 55 years old. I go down, it takes a long time to heal. I don't want that to happen. So I will be doing a ride and review video for this bike, but it may not be for a month or two, um, depending on the weather. If it does clear up and I get a chance to ride, you know darn well I'm gonna get it out there because I'm excited. Anyway, the Hemiway Zebra, step through is what we're going to work on today this is an improved version i think over the original cruiser that they still sell on Hemiway, but this one has a bigger battery the motor is improved so you get another six newton meters of torque and i'm really excited to get on this thing the cool part is is this step through seems like it'd be easier to get on and off than the original cruiser the original cruiser had this bar which makes it a little tougher to step in and off this one looks like it's a little bit more open so i'm really excited to look at this enough talking let's get into it <laughs> As usual I have a basic layout of tools I have the metric Allen wrenches metric open ends a crescent wrench uh, wire snips for like cutting zip ties a box cutter and a Phillips head screwdriver if I need anything else I'll grab it as we go but that's the basic tool setup I start with okay I've showed this step in other videos and I'm gonna show it here again because I don't think I've ever shown it on a Himaway video the way I like to open these boxes I'm a bigger guy this is a heavy bike. I can probably lift it out of the box just because I am a little bit bigger and stronger. But I don't tend to do that. I don't want to put the strain on my back. So what I do is I flip the box over, open the bottom, roll that back over so the bottom is open, and then I lift the box off the bike. It tends to be a lot easier to roll the, bike, the box over and back up than trying to lift a bike out of a box three and a half, four feet high. So that's what I'm going to show you right now. Let's get to it. You know what, I think I'm going to leave this part on the tire to help stabilize the bike as I lift the box over. And when you roll it back over, hold this flap down because you want the bottom to be open. I've lifted everything I can see that's loose in here. I've tried to lift it out already, so there shouldn't be anything but the bike and whatever loose pieces are in the box. Just be nice and gentle. Okay. Now I've got the bikes, the box flipped back over, the flaps are all out, so now I can just lift the box off. But I want to point out that you need to be careful because I can feel the box leaning this way, so that tells me the bike's a little unstable in there. So as you lift the box up and over, reach underneath and grab that bike to stabilize it. So this bike's a little floppy and the way they've got the tire wheel um, zip tied to the forks. I can't square up the forks which would likely stabilize it. 
So I'm going to lay it down again, grab my wire cutters and get that off. Then I'll try to set it back up. Lift the wheel off. Got the front fender. Now that I've got that off, I can take and square the forks up. Hopefully that'll stabilize it some. Okay, I used a piece of styrofoam to kind of set it up, but that's a little easier way than trying to lift the entire bike out of the box. I'm gonna set the box over here and I'm gonna take all the packing material off. One thing I tell people is if you can keep the box at least for the few, first few months. So if anything does come up with the bike that requires you to ship it back to Hemiway, you have a box to do that with. Plus you've got all the packing materials. I have a lot of space in my basement, so I take these boxes and I set them down there and I try to keep them for around the time of the warranty because I got a corner I can just set them in. And then once the warranty's up, then I'll get rid of the box and uh, I won't need it anymore because after the warranty, you're just gonna buy parts and, and do the work yourself anyway. So my next step is to get all the material or packing materials I can off the bike and kind of see what we're working with. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Don't need a lot of commentaries. I'm just cutting pieces off the bike. Okay, I've got all the uh, packing material off the bike. Um, I'll tell you what, it's a pretty bike. I love the Zebra um, paint decal, whatever that is. It looks like paint. That's pretty cool. Hemiway logo is a nice beefy frame, which I like. I think that's really cool. It's a good idea at this point to just take a general look over the bike and make sure that nothing was damaged in transit. Looks like the gear shift's good. I don't see anything wrong with the screen or the controller. The keys are typically always um, zip tied to the cord so you can clip those off and put them with your accessories. The forks look decent, there's no problem that I can see. Even though there's not a uh, derailleur guard installed, I don't see any damage with the uh, derailleur back here. Everything seems to be lined up. Man, that's a good looking tail light. It's got Hemiway on it. That's pretty cool. So, so far so good. Now I'm gonna do the basic assembly on this video. So what we're gonna probably do is go over the stuff that's in the accessories box, and then we'll start doing the basic assembly of the bike itself. First step will be to put on the handlebars. Secondly, we always put on the front wheel so we can get the bike up and on its kickstand. Then we assemble the pedals and that's really for assembly that's all you have to do just handlebars front wheel and the grit or the pedals the second video in this series is going to be the basic adjustments you do before you take it out on the road so that that'll be probably in the next week or two i'll do that so you can see the basic steps you need to do you're going to do stuff like adjust the brakes adjust the derailleur if required you're going to get your seat set up properly and then you should be off to the races. You're also going to want to go around the brake rotors with a little isopropyl alcohol and a clean rag. Get any oil or grease from the manufacturing process off of them. That way when you go get out on the road and you squeeze your brakes, the pads won't get coated with grease and oils and you can avoid a lot of squeaks and, and other issues that a lot of new bikes have with the brakes because you don't get the pads contaminated with oils. It's another reason you don't touch brake rotors or brake parts with your fingers because you don't want the oils on your fingers to contaminate that pad and start causing squeaks and high pitch whines. So let's uh, switch over and start going over the accessories. So what I found in here is it looks like there is a bag of bolts and nuts probably the stuff i need to assemble but it may also be extra i'm not sure yet we'll have to see how that goes that's kind of nice to have those extra bolts people don't have to go to the store that way so inside the hemiway accessories box got a nice hemiway hat those are always cool 
Got a nice headlight with two beams. That's pretty sweet looking. Got the front skewer with the conical springs. Notice when you get it, the conical springs are with the small side in towards the center on both conical springs. And the big side is on the outside. This is the way you install them when you put them on the bike. Is you make sure that when you take this nut and this spring off, you put this spring back on with the small side towards the center. It's a very important step. Basic tool that you can take out on the road with you. These are really nice. I don't tend to use these to assemble, but these are really nice if you get in a situation out on the road. Keep this in your pack that you have on your bike. They're nice to get you out of a lot of jams. Here's the uh, derailleur guard that we'll install. Left and right pedals. A Hemiway's owner's manual, which is really nice. And then in here should be the battery charger. I'm going to clip the keys off. Normally, I would take the battery out and get it charging right away because I'd want to be able to, after assembly and doing the basic adjustments, I'd want to get this thing out on the road. But right now, with all the snow, that's not going to happen. But I will take the battery out just for assembly so the bike's a little easier to manipulate. Just got that extra 10 or 12 pounds, whatever the uh, battery weighs, out of the bike. Makes it a little easier for me to handle and I can set the battery over on the table. Now on this side of the bike you're going to see that you have the key that releases the battery. You also have a charge port that allows you to charge the battery while it's on the bike. You can also take the battery out and charge it on the bench if you want. You can do it either way which is always nice. Alright, to remove the battery you'll, you'll put the key in here, you'll turn it and open it to the release mode. Now this, this key does not turn the bike on and off, it's just to release the battery. There's a knob underneath that while holding the battery up in the frame, you'll pull it to one side and then the battery releases out. And we'll have to show you that again with the wheel on so you know how difficult that is to do while the wheel's on. And here's the 20 amp hour battery. Okay, the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna put the handlebars up into the um, bike stem here. I take a four millimeter Allen wrench and remove all four bolts from the uh, handlebar bracket. Okay, before I finish taking these bolts out, I want to show kind of a key component to when you tighten this back on. Now I'll remove this and put the handlebars in place and then put it back on, but right now there's two bolts on top and bottom. But what I want to point out is that there's a gap at the top and then there's a gap at the bottom. What you don't want to do when retightening these back onto the handlebars is over tighten the top and leave the big gap here at the bottom. You want the gaps on the top and the bottom here and here to be basically identical when the clamp is tightened all the way down onto the handlebars. That way you get even clamping pressure on the handlebars and you don't get a situation where the clamping on the bottom is less than the top and you get a weakness in the handlebars. So as you tighten this back up, make sure the gap at the bottom and the gap at the top is the same so it, it, as you push it on it clamps evenly around the circumference of the handlebars. So once you remove the bracket off the front, I think I'm going to bring the wires in front of the handlebar. So you notice I pulled these wires so they're coming, instead of wrapping around the back, they're coming around the front. On the front of the handlebars, you got these white markings. I'm centering those up on the, the bike stem. That way the handlebars going out either that direction or this direction is even. I'm not so worried about how the handlebars sit like this yet until we start getting some clamping pressure on the front. But as you can see, I'm just setting it right up in there and it's, and it's holding in place so I can get that front bracket on. So now I'm gonna take the front bracket, slide it up underneath the wires, and start the first bolt. And be careful as you start these, you are threading into an aluminum piece and you definitely don't want to strip or cross thread these bolts. It's not the end of the world if you do, you can get replacement parts off Amazon for the bike stem and stuff that's really easy to replace. And I'll probably show how to do that in a future video. So I got the first two started, I'll put the bottom two in. Now one thing to note here, I'm not putting any pressure on the clamp at this point. I'm just getting the bolt started. I want the bolts, uh, you know, 
three, four, five threads in before you start putting any pressure on anything. And now I'm just going to snug up the two on the left side. Again, checking that the gaps on the top and bottom are about even. And I just put a basic clamp pressure. It's enough to hold the handlebars in place, but not so much that I'm going to clamp down full, fully yet. And then I'll tighten up the two on the right, just so they're snug. Okay, now that I've got all four bolts snug down, the handlebar is pretty firm. What you're going to want to probably do at this point is put the front wheel on and then come back and tighten these up. But just so I don't forget to do it later, I'm going to show you how to put the proper way to tighten these up right now. And the process is pretty simple. To tighten these down, you'll tighten the top left, the bottom right, bottom or top right, bottom left. So you kind of crisscross as you tighten. And I would personally, I like to go a half turn or full turn on each one and just keep duplicating the process, making sure your gaps at the top and the bottom of the bracket are the same until it's just fully tight. You are tightening and still bolt into an aluminum part, so don't over tighten, but make sure they're really good and snug. So I did the top left, now I'm doing the bottom right, about the same amount, top right, and then the bottom right, or bottom left, I should say. Now I gotta tell you, these are pretty tight right now. The handlebars aren't moving, so I think they're good. I'm gonna leave them like this, and then if I need to loosen them up to adjust the handlebars once the front wheel's on and I can see where it's sitting, that way I can do that later. But right now they're good and tight, and I could take this out right now and write it. They're tight enough for that. Um, but I'll probably end up loosening them up and adjusting where the, the handlebars sit once I can get this thing up on both wheels and sit on the seat and feel, feel where the grips are in my hands. Now to install the front wheel, I gotta get this out. And it looks like I just put my foot on it and lift the bike up to pop it out of there. Then I can set the bike down. This is to protect the forks during uh, shipment. So keep that in case you need to ship it again. Okay, when I took the wheel off, this was in the axle, you simply pull that off. This is to protect your rotor from getting damaged. And then on the other side, you have this part here that's stuck in the axle. I pulled that out as well. It's a good idea at this point to take some isopropyl alcohol and clean off the rotor, both front, front and back, just to make sure that there's no oil or anything from the manufacturing process. That way, when you put it in the pads, you won't contaminate the brake pads with any oils or contaminants. So what you wanna do is grab a clean rag and some isopropyl alcohol and pour a little isopropyl alcohol on your rag and you're gonna clean off the, the brake pad surface all the way around the brake rotor, both front and back, inside and out. Give it a good once over. What you're gonna see, see all that dark stuff there? That's the grease and stuff from the manufacturing process. Then you pick a clean area of the rag and you'll do a final touch up just to make sure there's no residue on the rotor. Check that, it's just wet. So we got all the grime off of the rotor. Now the reason you do that is if the rotor has oils and contaminates the brake pads, then what happens is the brake pads as they hold on they'll kind of skip and grab and skip and grab and that vibration causes the squeaks that a lot of people get on their brakes and so you want to clean this off really good now because you don't want to put it in the brake caliper and contaminate the brake pads that are in there now if you do get a, a buzz or a squeak um, from your brakes you can pull the brake pads out of your calipers clean them off with isopropyl alcohol, re-clean the rotor so everything's spotless to begin with, and then put it back together. And a lot of times that right there will stop the, the squeak. The other thing I wanna say is I'm very careful not to touch this rotor with my fingers because the oils from your fingers can cause that problem as well. If you're not comfortable doing that with your bare hands and not touching it, then get a pair of blue nitrile gloves. You can get at any you know, home improvement store and put those on that way you're not touching anything that oils can come off and contaminate the rotor. 
Okay, one of the last things you, can, you have to do before you put this up on the wheel is you'll see that there's a little red spacer that's put into the caliper here. The reason they put that in is for hydraulic brakes especially, if you were to squeeze the brake handles up here, then down here the pistons that push the brake pads in can pop out of their cylinders. And when that happens, the caliper's ruined. So they put this in here as a guard. So if you do squeeze the brake handle and the pads come in, those cylinders don't pop out. Those brake pistons don't pop out of the cylinders. So you have to remove this to put the wheel on with the rotor because the rotor goes where the red piece is, the spacer is. But when you pull that out, make double sure you don't squeeze that brake handle because if you do and it pops those cylinders or those pistons out of the cylinders, that caliper is done. You're not going to be able to fix it. You just basically go buy a new one. So that's something to keep in mind as you're doing this. And it's just as simple as popping that out and throw it in the box with your other parts so if you ever need it, you can find it. Okay, now we're ready to put the wheel on, lift up the bike, and slide it back, and just make sure you slide the rotor down in between those pads. Now this can be done with one person, but it is easier with two. As you can see, I did it fairly simply. Once you get the wheel sitting on the axle like that, then you can put your kickstand down. Now once the kickstand's down, it'll sit fairly nicely in the dropouts, the axle wheel. So you got these threaded pieces here. I double check at the top and make sure I get a fairly consistent gap side to side. Now this may be slightly off because it's sitting on a lean um, on the kickstand. When we go to put that together, I will sit that up straight so that the axle is all the way in both dropouts on either side. Now I'm going to take the skewer from the accessories box, remove this nut here, just unscrew it. There. I'm going to slide the conical spring off, remembering that the small side goes towards the center. And I'll set that down. I will feed this in from the rotor side because everything I've seen online shows this being installed from the rotor side and it'll come out here. That way the clamp is on the left hand side of the bike and then this nut and spring. Again the small side of the conical spring goes in and I tighten that up. This bolt here is for the uh, fender in case you're wondering. Okay, now that I have it kind of in there, I get the bike up off of the uh, kickstand. Make sure that the axle is fully seated. And what I'm doing here is I've got the bike sitting straight up and down, and then I'm going to adjust the tightness of this clamp so that it's fairly firm to push on. I'm going to make sure that the, wheel, the dropouts are all the way in the axle, and then I will push this up all the way in. I put this in the up position because then if I'm riding and I'm going down the road and I notice this is hanging down, that means this is popped loose and I need to stop right away and put that back on so as you pull your handlebars to go over a bump, your front wheel doesn't fall out. So that's important to do. I always keep this up. Clamps always on the same side as the rotor. That's important and the front wheel's installed. So now that we've got the handlebars installed, the front wheels installed, we've got the two pedals. It's very important that you put, put the correct pedal on the correct side of the bike because this thread is threaded opposite of the thread on the other side. And the threads on the pedals match the corresponding crank arm. So what you do is you look at your pedals and you're going to find a stamp on the pedal that has an R and then another stamp on the other pedal that has an L right here. So the left and the right are as you're sitting on the bike, the right side's over here and the left side's over here. So you'll take the left hand pedal, and you'll put it on this side, you'll take the right hand pedal that's stamped in the right and you'll put it on the other side of the bike. Do that now so that you don't mix them up later and put them on the wrong side. The other thing I noticed that uh, Hemiway's done, which is an excellent idea, it says left side pedal and it's got an arrow which way to turn the threads in because on both sides you're going to turn them a different direction. On the left side it'll be counterclockwise, 
on the right side, it'll be actually clockwise. And the way I remember it, if it wasn't for the arrow, is when you put these in, you'll rotate it towards the front of the bike. And you'll do that on both the, the left and the right. So you put it in here, and you'll get the thread started. And you'll get that snug down. Now I use a 16 millimeter open-ended wrench for this because I find that the thickness of the open-ended wrench can fit in between the pedal on the flats where if you use something like a crescent wrench those tend to be a little thicker and they have problems so I like having an open-ended wrench to do this so I just finish that last little bit and then tighten it down nice and hard get these good and snugged in it's also a good idea if you're not comfortable making sure you get that tight enough is to put a little Loctite on it because the last thing you want to happen is I've seen so many stories where they didn't get this tight enough and it started backing out and what happens is it gets about halfway out and the pedal gets loose and you're putting a lot of pressure on these pedals I'm 300 I'm almost 300 pounds 280 pounds and when I put pressure on these pedals you can just tear the threads in this aluminum crank arm up and once that happens you have to replace the aluminum crank arm, which means you need a special tool to pull that off to put a new one on. So you have to buy a new, a new crank arm and put it on. So make sure you get these nice and tight. And after the first few rides, double check it because this is the one thing that I've seen a lot of people struggle with. You can repair the threads, but it's not easy. And you, a lot of times they just end up getting a whole new crank arm. So this side's down, let's do the other side. Again, you'll see the arrow showing the right hand side pedal and the arrow showing that you're going to be going clockwise on this side which is forward towards the front of the bike and again snug that down not a bad idea to use Loctite now both pedals are on okay one thing I just noticed is the rear rack is not fully assembled onto the bike here so I'm going to pull that back a little bit I'm going to remove the two mounting bolts from the frame so now I remove the two bolts out of the frame I'll slide this up adjust it so it fits on there and I'll reinstall the two bolts now once I snug the two down here I'm going to tighten these up I'm also going to tighten up the bolt here and on the other side just to make sure they're all tightened down right now and that rear rack doesn't go anywhere now the rear rack is nice and tight everything seems to be look good the next thing you'll do to put the rear fender on is you'll remove these bolts put the fender stays on these bolts here on both sides of so both the right and the left hand side so now I've removed that bolt put it through the fender stay and back into that mounting point on the rear rack and just give it a good snug down a lot of these you're going to want to go through and double check anyway to make sure they're nice and tight I think these are the two bolts for the um, derailleur guard which I think is always a good idea to put on so we'll take these out put the, the derailleur guard on but right now let's get the fenders finished up so the same thing on this side Put the bolt through the fender stay, back on that mounting point. And there's gonna be a little stress on this bolt, so make sure when you're putting it in, you don't cross thread it. I think half of assembling a bike is not cross threading the bolts. Everything else is pretty simple. And Hemiway does a really good job of making this fairly straightforward. So you got the rear brake, you got the rear fender mounted, We'll put the front fender and the light on in just a second. Right now I'm gonna clean off this rear brake rotor while I'm thinking about it with the isopropyl alcohol. Now last time I used this side, so this time I'm gonna switch sides. That way I don't get any of the old grime on the new rotor. And again, get a nice little grimy side. When you get to a point where you're happy and you got the majority of it off, find a clean place on your rag, a little more alcohol, and do a final wipe down. Really, there's no more grime coming off, so that's pretty clean. Let's get the uh, front fender and light on. 
Okay, to get the, to put the fender and the light on, you're going to need to remove this bolt through the front fork. I want to point out that the front fork, this part of the brace on the front fork is always on the forward part of the bike. I have seen people put that back here, which puts the brake caliper on the wrong side and really messes them up because it's some people just don't know that this goes on the front of the bike. So I'll use my crescent wrench and a five millimeter Allen wrench to remove this bolt. Then I'll take the fender and it's got the stays. The stays are always on the back side of the tire. You slide the fender up. Slide the fender up. You, you can get the bracket underneath. The bracket on the fender goes on the front side of this. Looks like on this bike. Now I set up the bracket and the and I pull the lens forward so I can get at the bolt and then I'll run the bolt through the headlight through the fender bracket and into the fork I'll take the washer and nut that came off put the washer on first and then it's a lock nut so you want to make sure that the little rounded side is back get that hand tight that way it's just sitting there loose now this is a five millimeter if I didn't say that already and I'll snug that down. Once I get it snug, I take the headlight, turn it up and then I take this bracket on the fender and I push it up. So I push that up so that I've got maximum clearance from the fender to the wheel. You can always move it down later if you want less clearance but I find that having clearance is nice even though the fender moves up and down with the wheel. All the fender does for me is stop water and dirt and debris from hitting me while I'm riding. Now that I have that pushed up, now I can tighten it up. To do that, I pull the headlight up to the position I want it. Once I get that nice and tight, I'm gonna take and just hand adjust everything so the front end looks nice with the wheel. And the headlight looks straight and that's a good set, good start. The next step is to put the fender stays on the bolt here. So I have an eight millimeter wrench and a four millimeter Allen wrench and I remove these. Then I take the bolt, slide it up through the fender stay, through the bracket, put the washer on and then the, the lock nut. Once that's finger tight on, put the open end on the nut and tighten the Allen wrench righty tighty. Tighten that down nice. Gives me a nice gap to the wheel and complete the process on the other side. Now I double check that the fender is aligned on the wheel, which it is. If it's not, you can loosen this bolt here up and adjust these in and out. That way you can get the fender moved one direction or the other to line up properly with the wheel. The headlight's on, the fender's on. The last thing we need to do is connect the headlight. Aim that straight forward. Connect the headlight wire here and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, all the connectors on the e-bikes are connectors that pull straight apart and push straight together and you're going to find that the headlight wire is a two pin wire and it's got a small slot at the bottom and on this side you're going to find a cor corresponding key and the two wires also you're going to find that it has nice they put on these nice bright arrows on both that you line up when you push them together so what I do is line up those arrows, which lines up the key in the slot, and you push them straight together. And it's just that easy. Now these are tough connectors to push together and to pull apart. Just take your time and make sure you push them straight together. Never twist, that, that'll wreck these. It'll wreck all these connectors, so make sure that that's done. So the next thing you gotta do is put the derailleur guard on. It goes on these two bolts here and protects the derailleur in case you fall over. Something smashes into the derailleur, you don't bend the hanger. So we're going to put that on next. We just remove the bolts out of the frame. 
I'm going to pull this cable out of the way. I'm going to snug these bolts down. Now I'm just going to make sure that they're put in a place where if this thing comes down and hits, it's not going to hit my derailleur, it's going to hit the guard instead. And then I'm just going to finish tightening up these bolts. And the derailleur guard's on, it's protecting that. Now you're going to want to go over the whole bike and double check all the bolts and just make sure they're nice and snug and tight. And that includes the two up that hold the bike stem on and just go generally go through and just double check the tightness of all bolts. But one of the key ones I want to point out is the center bolt. I have received some bikes, the center bolt's loose. I doubt I'm going to see that on a Hemiway. <laughs> nope. But double check that on both sides and make sure, go around generally and just make sure all the bolts are tightened up and that you're all set to go. So that's the basic assembly for the bike. We put on the handlebars, we put on the front wheel, the fender, the headlight, we've attached rear rack and the derailleur guard. Now the only thing to do is to go through and double check that the handlebars in the right position, get your seat height set up, adjust your derailleur, uh, make sure your brakes are properly adjusted, and we'll be good to go. Before we do that though, what I'm going to do is I'll do that in the next video, but for this video I'm going to put the battery back in the frame, I'm going to power it up, double check the light, make sure everything's working that way, and we'll get going. Okay, I'm going to slide this up under the frame. Now once it's in there, I'll turn the key to lock it in place, take the keys out. That was actually pretty easy. Now we power up the bike by clicking and holding the power button. You'll notice the uh, screen comes on, shows it has 0.4 of a mile. Now I'm going to check the headlight, I'm going to click or just click it on. You'll notice the light comes on and a nice bright tail light comes on as well. That looks pretty cool. You'll also note when I squeeze the brake, the tail light flashes on both sides. That tells me that the brake cutoffs are working. Now the last thing I do to check is I'll lean the bike up on the kickstand so the rear wheels off off of the ground and I'll give it a little throttle. Everything seems to be working. So that's the whole unboxing and assembly of the new Ze Zebra Hemiway, Hemiway Zebra step through. Um, really, to be honest with you, I'm really impressed with this bike. It came extremely well packaged. That's one of the complaints I had when I got my first Hemiways is they didn't have that big piece of foam that stopped the bike from going side to side. Now, the way this thing is packaged, I imagine their, their damage, any damages from shipping has gone down dramatically, you know, if they have any at all, because that thing was extremely well packaged inside that box. It couldn't move a whole lot, which correlates directly over into less damage when you ship it. This is a beautiful bike. The frame is extremely beefy. Holds up to like 400 pounds. So, I mean, you're going to be able to ride on this. This, this rear rack is really sturdy. I think, it's, I think it's going to be a really fun bike. I can't wait till the snow goes away and I can get this thing out. I tell you what, even if it's 30, 40 degrees, I'm going out as soon as that pavement's dry. Because this thing is sweet. The only thing I need to do is the basic setup for the bike. And I will show that in the next video. If you got to this point in the video, I really appreciate it, and I will catch you next time.